Welcome everyone. This is Mr. Lyle. This is Honors Chemistry, and this is the first in a series of videos that I will make to accompany each lecture. It, it'll give you a chance to go back and uh, listen again to something that you may not have understood or something that wasn't uh, particularly clear in class. So I hope you'll find these helpful. Today, we're gonna to keep this video pretty short. Uh, we're studying chemistry, of course, and when you think about chemistry, I hope you think about matter first. And when you think of matter, I hope you think of um, pretty much anything and everything, anything that you can see and sometimes things that you can't see, uh, for instance, gases, uh, anything that has, has mass and takes up space. Uh, and we also in chemistry really focus on the transformation uh, that that matter undergoes in chemical reactions or in physical processes. I think one of the biggest challenges that students face when they first take a course of study in chemistry is one of scale. We're used to things like the picture on the left here where I can see water in all three phases. There's liquid water at the bottom of the picture. There's an iceberg that's water uh, as, as a solid. And there's even water in the air that we can't necessarily uh, always see, water vapor or water in the gas phase. When we're in the lab, most of the chemistry that we study is um, it, it, or most of the chemistry that we do, I should say, is chemistry that has to do with uh, the macroscopic world. And this is the macroscopic world right here. Macro means large. So if I'm measuring the uh, density of something, or if I'm taking the temperature of something, I'm working in the macroscopic world. It's the easiest of what we call the three domains of chemistry for students to understand because it's something that we see every single day. The problem is that if we really truly want to understand chemistry, um, we have to go much, much smaller because we know that all of these macroscopic um, substances, liquid water, ice, water vapor, they all exist as things like molecules, atoms, protons, neutrons, electrons, things that are very, very small. This is not biology class small. This is much, much smaller. So you can't look under a microscope and see uh, an individual water molecule. There are techniques. There are instruments that are available, especially in uh, high-level research institutions and universities that might allow you to uh, look at individual atoms or groups of atoms or molecules. That's not something that we're going to have a chance to do, and it's not something that you can do on a regular basis. And so how do, how do we deal with the microscopic nature of, of chemistry? The three pictures that you see in circles to the right of our macroscopic world, um, try to model for us what this microscopic world might look like. Micro means small. And these individual water molecules are very small. One thing that you'll notice in all three pictures is that uh, it doesn't matter if you're dealing with liquid water or ice or water vapor, they're all made up of the same stuff, water molecules. And so if I look right here, here's an individual water molecule. It's made with two hydrogen atoms, you know this, and one oxygen atom. And we can actually get from these pictures, from these models, quite a bit of information about each of these three phases. What do you notice um, about the, the differences between the pictures? You know, I'll, I'll throw out a few things that I notice. First of all, up here is supposed to represent water in the gas phase. 
And the first thing that I notice is that I see fewer molecules than I do in either of the other two pictures. So that that's telling me something about the spacing of the molecules. There's more space in between the molecules in the gas phase than there is in the liquid or the solid phase. And if I know a little bit of chemistry, uh, that might tell me that the density, just how much matter is packed into a given space or volume, uh, the density is pretty low for something in the gas phase. If I look down at at solid ice, I see more molecules than I do in the gas phase, but fewer than I do in the liquid phase. That's unusual. And what that tells me is that because there's really more space between the ga- the the solid ice molecules um, than there is in the liquid phase at the bottom of the picture, that's telling me that that ice is less dense than liquid water. It's really unusual for a solid to be less dense than its own liquid, but we know that's the case with ice, and we can see that. Uh, in the picture, the iceberg is floating on top of the water because it is less dense. The other thing that I notice in the solid picture is just that there is a lot of structure there. Um, it, it, there it seems to be a recognizable and repeatable pattern uh, that these molecules are forming with one another. And they also seem to be locked into place. That's something that that we kind of is ascribed to uh, particles that are in the solid phase. And then if I look at the bottom picture uh, below, I see the most molecules. That's telling me that liquid water is pretty dense, at least compared to the other two phases. I see a lot less structure um, in the bottom picture than I do in the picture of ice. The molecules seem to be a bit more randomly oriented uh, and um, and seemingly uh, n- no recognizable patterns exist. In fact, liquid water looks a lot like the water in the gas phase, except there are um, many more particles, many more molecules, and they're closer together. But there are limitations to models of this microscopic world and uh, in class, hopefully you'll remember, we, t- we talked about some of those limitations um, a couple off of the top of my head. If I look at um, these pi- pictures, they're static. That means they're not moving. There's no dynamic motion. And so we don't get a sense of the energy and the excitement that these molecules have. Uh, a secondary thing, it's two-dimensional, right? Our model here is flat, so we don't get a sense of what these molecules look like in a three-dimensional setting. But overall, as a chemist, I automatically, when I see substances, when I think about substances, I think about them as molecules or as atoms, and I tend to not think of them in their macroscopic forms, at least not as much. The second big challenge that I think that exists for um, for new students is how we actually talk about um, molecules and substances and how we write about them. It's true that we're going to use pictures, and I think it's a great tool, and I think you should draw pictures at a molecular level like the ones we see in the middle often, but just for uh, the sake of of time and efficiency, uh, we often use a symbolic language, and it's kind of squeezed in over here on the very right-hand side of our picture. I'm running out of room myself just writing the word symbolic. So we see um, something very familiar to most students, H2O. There's um, a parentheses G next to it. We see H2O again, this time with an S, and uh, this time at the bottom with an L in parentheses. You may not be used to seeing those parentheses um, with a letter in between. Those represent something called phase labels, and it's just speaking to the fact that 
Uh, we have water in the gas phase, water in the solid phase, water in the liquid phase. That symbolic language is like learning a new language, right? If I want to learn French, um, I've got a lot of vocabulary to learn. And that's, that's true in chemistry as well. Um, and, and we have to understand, like, why, why do we have a little subscript to when we write H2O? How would it be different if I wrote two H's and one O, something like that? Or what if I wrote two H2O? What would that mean? So that's the big challenge, uh, really two big challenges for us this year as we begin our study of chemistry. Can we kind of flip between the macroscopic and the microscopic worlds? And can we translate either of those two into our own language of sorts, this symbolic language that we use to describe uh, substances, molecules, and compounds, and things of that nature? So uh, that's, that's it for this first video. Hope that um, was helpful if you came back to watch it uh, after class. And... Uh, we'll see you next time.